Hi friends, Joe Edelman here again. I hope everyone's doing well. Today I bring you the third video in my synth sounds series, which will be a few examples of sounds from Tom's supergroup Atoms for Peace, as well as his solo works. There are links in the description to my two-part Radiohead installment, so be sure to check these out if you haven't already. I'll start by saying that I absolutely loved the Amok album when it was released in 2013, and it remains one of my favorite pieces of Radiohead-affiliated music. To me, it felt like a natural extension of the electro-acoustic ideas and sounds that Tom had started exploring on The King of Limbs, which is another album that I think is sorely underrated. Tom's sound from that era relied heavily on two synthesizers, the classic Korg MS-20 and the Dave Smith Prophet 08 the latter of which has also been used heavily in Radiohead's touring. The MS-20 is a monophonic or single voice synthesizer from the late 70s with a really great fat sound and distinctive filtering. Unlike the other 70s classic, the Mini Moog Model D, it's also semi-modular, which means that you can use patch cables to creatively reroute its component parts for a variety of cool modulation effects. The Prophet 08 is the modern iteration of an all-time classic polyphonic synth lineage, and it also boasts incredible sonic versatility. Here today I have Korg's slightly miniaturized version of the MS-20, as well as the Prophet Rev 2, which is the latest update to the 08. One of the other joys of the MS-20 workflow is that there is no digital preset saving, unlike the Prophet, so what you see on the knobs at any point in time is what you get. Therefore, in the following examples, I'll do my best to recreate the tones and give you the approximate dial positions for the synth, as well as an explanation of what's happening when I do so that you can take that knowledge to any similar monophonic synthesizer. These and the profit examples will be linked in the description for your reference. We'll start with the main synth figure to the Atoms for Peace track Ingenue. The synth sound from the studio version of the song is loosely translated to piano for live performances, which makes sense since it's a fairly irregular pattern spanning a large octave range. However, the underlying timbre of the sound is actually quite basic and makes use of some classic synth techniques. I'm going to set the second oscillator to a pulse wave and set the mix of both oscillators equal at around 7 or 8. Then I'll play with the fine tuning on the second oscillator until I get a beating or chorusing type effect. Next I use the MS-20's onboard modulation generator, which is basically an LFO, to assign vibrato to the pitch. Then I'm going to turn down the cutoff of the low pass filter and add a little bit of resonance. Finally, I'm going to take advantage of the semi-modular capabilities of the MS-20 to imitate key tracking for the low-pass filters cutoff point. I'll do this by patching the CV out, or the pitch output of the keyboard, into the input of a VCA, and then the output of that VCA to the cutoff point for the filter. And then I'll use the mod wheel as the control input for that VCA and use it to dial in the amount of key tracking that I want. Now let's talk about the song Default, which I also very recently covered with Taka. There are three different synth sounds to discuss here. The noisy staccato of the main riff, the throbbing bass line, and the luscious pads of the chorus section. The bass line is also a fairly simple, single oscillator MS-20 sound, while the riff and the pad can be recreated using some slightly more complex tweaking on the Prophet. As a bonus note, the chorus progression makes heavy use of Tom's favorite interval, the tenth interval, which you can hear me talk a little bit more about in my How to Play Guitar Like Tom York video. Let's take a closer look at each sound. So once again, I'm going to use the modulation generator, or LFO, to create pitch vibrato, but I'm going to do it at a much faster rate that's more or less in line with sixteenth notes with the tempo of the song. And then I'll turn down the cutoff of the filter once more and give it a little bit of resonance. And then finally, I'm going to also assign that modulation generator to modulate the cutoff as well as the pitch, so you get that throbbing type effect. Mm -hmm. 
For the main riff of default, I'm going to use the prophet's unison mode, which is monophonic note behavior. I'm going to set the first oscillator to a saw triangle and tune it to an E2. Then I'm going to apply some shaping and some fine tuning adjustments to that wave. The second wave will be a sawtooth wave, which I'll tune up to C3, which is a major sixth above E2. And I'm also going to shape it a little bit. Then I'll mix the two waves together to get that harmony effect. Here I'm turning up the slop control to give more analog style drift and turning up the noise substantially because this is a very hairy or fuzzy type sound. I'll use the less aggressive two pole mode for the filter to let more of that noise come through. Finally, I'll use the audio mod, which passes the output of the oscillators to modulate the cutoff of the filter and gives it a sort of metallic type effect. I'm turning the volume of the amp down a little bit to balance it with the other layer that I'm gonna add. And then I'm gonna use the delay control to offset the attack of the envelope to give it a little bit more of a stutter. And then I'll set up the controls of the ADSR for the amp with no sustain or release, just a very quick decay and short attack. Next, I'll do the Tom York thing and use an LFO to assign some vibrato to the oscillators. Another cool trick is using noise as a modulation source to modulate the frequencies of the oscillators, and this just adds a lot more grit to the sound, which you can also hear on my Everything in Its Right Place live synth patch. Now we're going to add the second layer, which is a lot more plucky, and we're going to use a C2 on the bottom oscillator and E1 for the second oscillator. So this is essentially the same harmonic relationship of the first layer, but an octave down. I'm going to add a little bit of shaping to the second wave and then mix the two together and you'll hear the harmony. Once again, adding slop for analog style drift. And I'm going to use the four pole filter mode with a fairly low cutoff point and slight amount of resonance. I'll increase the amount of influence that the filter envelope has over the sound, and I'll also give it some key tracking and some audio mod, like I described from the previous layer. Filter envelope is going to be pretty basic, just a very short decay to get that plucking sound. And moving on to the amplifier envelope, I'm going to again balance the level with the other layer, and then I'm going to set up the ADSR similar to the filter. Once again, we're going to use an LFO to assign some vibrato to the sound. Next, I'm going to assign the mod wheel to control the release time of both envelopes for this layer of the sound. And you can hear in the song different points where the notes kind of open up and ring out a little bit longer. So this is allowing me to do that. And once again, I'm going to introduce some noise to modulate the frequencies of the oscillators, which gives it more grit. Finally, for the chorus pad sound, I'm going to combine a sawtooth and a pulse wave oscillator, the second of which I'm tuning down an octave. I'm going to add some shaping to both waves, and then I'm going to mix them together and add a little bit of slop like I did in the previous cases. I'm also going to turn up the sub octave to give the sound more body. And then add a little bit of noise in. Once again, I'm going to use the four pole mode for the filter, and I'm going to introduce a good amount of envelope control because, you know, the time dimension of how this sound evolves is pretty important to it. I'm also going to add a bit of audio mod again. It 
So for the filter envelope, I'm gonna set a quick attack time, longer decay and release times, and a fairly low sustain setting so that the sound is darkest after it passes through the envelope. I'll set up the amplifier envelope somewhat similarly with a long decay time, a uh, shorter release because we're gonna hold down the keys to get the full sweep of the filter. I'm gonna use the Prophet's third envelope to give me additional control over the filter envelope, which I'll set up in the mod matrix section later. And here I'm going to add two different LFOs to the two different oscillators, one at a slightly slower rate and one a little bit faster. I'm also going to assign another LFO to modulate the shape of the first oscillator, which gives that kind of flanging or rhythmic thinning effect. Now on the studio recording, you can hear during the ends of the choruses that the sounds that we're playing are actually reversed and played back in reverse. But to imitate that effect on the synth, you can use the mod wheel to control the attacks and releases of the envelopes for the sound and effectively create sort of a fake reverse sound. Now here's where I'm assigning the mod wheel to also bring a bit of that auxiliary envelope on top of the filter envelope. And finally, I'm going to set up a reverse key tracking where the higher notes on the keyboard actually have a mellower sound and lower cutoff point, and the lower notes are a little bit more aggressive and less filtered. Next, I'll give you my approximate version of the sound heard on Tom's recent and instant classic Dawn Chorus from the album Anima. I've continued to tweak this sound since recording my cover of the song, and it's still a work in progress, so bear with me. For this sound, I use as a starting point the fantastic article on Anima synth sounds from Reverb Machine, which is also linked in the description. This is a tricky sound to reproduce in a live context, which may be why Tom opts for a Rhodes piano tone in live performances. The synth heard on the album is actually a Prophet 6, which is the modern update of the original analog classic, the Prophet 5. It's another fantastic Dave Smith creation, but still the Rev 2 can come fairly close, given its similar oscillator and filter sounds. On the recording, you can hear the three voices of each chord are separately panned left, center, and right, and each is processed slightly differently. They are also slightly more normalized in duration and timing than a human hand would produce, both of which suggest a performance which was MIDI recorded, altered, and then re-recorded. There are also occasional filter sweeps that one wouldn't have a free hand for in real time, but could be achieved using an expression pedal underfoot. Here's a breakdown of my patch. This is a pretty basic sound. We're just going to use one oscillator set to pulse wave, and we're going to make it fairly thin by cranking up the shape mod. I'm going to add a little bit of slop like I did in other examples, and a little bit of noise. I'm going to use the shallower two-pole filtering and add a little bit of resonance to the sound. I'm going to turn up the envelope's control over the filter and also add a little bit of key tracking. 
Now, here's where your mileage may vary. In the original version of the sound, I added a decent amount of decay to the filter, which gave it a pluckier sound, but turning it down will make it a lot smoother sounding when the filter is closed. I'm adding pan spread to imitate the studio separation of the notes. And for the amplifier envelope, I'm mostly focused on the release time, which is fairly long to let me play it like a piano sustain pedal. I'm going to use the LFO to give a healthy amount of vibrato to the sound, which gives it that seasick quality. And I'm going to do my reverse key tracking trick again with the note number assigned to cut off in reverse. Finally, I'm going to assign the mod wheel to control both the cutoff and the envelope severity of the filter, which allows me to, you know, open up the mod wheel and make the sound brighter like it does in the song. Finally, I'll give you two somewhat similar sounds that were used strictly for the live performances of anima tracks, Twist and Not the News. These sounds both make use of rhythmic, tempo-synchronized LFOs, and both feature hard-edged sawtooth waves. Once again, the Twist sound, like the rest of the song, also makes use of Tom's magic tenth interval, and is a stand-in for the similar but somewhat softer and flute-like sound from the album. The Not the News sound replaces the deep strings that enter during the apex of the song on the album. Let's dive into each a little further. Once again, I'm going to use unison mode to give me monophonic control, and I'm going to use the BPM to help tempo sync my LFO. I'll tune the first oscillator up to C3 and give it a little bit of fine tuning. And the second oscillator I'm tuning to A1, which is a distance of a major tenth from C3. And I'll mix them together and you can hear the harmony. You guessed it, slop. I'm going to use a fairly high cutoff point for the filter because this is still a fairly bright sound. And I'm going to set up the envelope to be pretty basic, just a little bit of release. I'm going to set up yet another pitch modulating LFO, but I'm going to make the shape square so that it hard jumps between the octaves, and I'm going to sync it to the clock of the synth so that it occurs at a fixed rate of one step at the tempo. The second LFO I'm going to apply to the amplifier envelope to get that same throbbing, but for the volume of the sound as opposed to the pitch. going to use the Prophet's onboard effects to add a little bit of reverb to give the sound a little bit more vibe. Finally, I'm going to double down on the pulsating aspect of the sound by using the LFO that's currently modulating amplitude to also control the cutoff point for the filter. Once again, this is another unison mode sound with a tempo synced LFO. I've got two sawtooth oscillators with a little bit of shaping on each. 
and we'll put a little bit of fine tuning on the second one. Mix them together. We'll add a healthy dose of sub octave since this is a fairly bassy sound. Using the four pole filter with again a pretty high cutoff, so this is a pretty raw sound. Very basic amplitude envelope, again, just a little bit of release time. I'm going to use the LFO to modulate the cutoff on the filter in a rhythmic way that's synced to the tempo of the synth. And I'm switching between two different rates like he does in the live performance, one that's more on eighth notes and then one that kind of floats in a sort of three over four or polyrhythmic type feel. <laughs> And finally, I'll add a little bit of chorus to the sound to just make it a little bit wider and bigger. That's going to do it for this episode. Stay tuned for future parts to this and other instructional series. And in the meantime, be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you all again soon.